And we also have, let's go right to my buddy. This guy is one of my favorites. And I'm gonna, Ian, are you there? I am here. How nice is this, Craigers? I, I, I love you. I run into you at different NBA arenas. <laughs> Ian Eagle, the voice of the Brooklyn Nets. And, and you have a sense of humor, and you seem like a very nice guy. Well, you and I have crossed paths in random Minneapolis hotels, NCAA <laughs> venues, uh, on the streets of New Orleans. Yes, yes. Yes. You came by the Meadowlands at one point. There were like 18 people there, and there you were for a net game yes. when, when yes. the Nets were irrelevant, and yet you were there. I mean, that, that shows something about the kind of guy you are, not just for, for the Timberwolves. It, it, was, it was Nets, Kings. It was a random Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. And you just you were taking it in. And, yeah, I, I, um, and I, I point out to people, and, of course, the Wolves lost tonight at home to the Warriors, which is uh, – I, I, I'm sorry. About yeah, that's okay. No, basically, I was okay. an I, I was an NBA fan for 20 years before the the Wolves came into existence in 1989. I just missed uh, because of my age. I just missed Bill Russell playing, and then my first favorite player was Walt Clyde Frazier. My dad was from New York. My dad's actually from Teaneck, New Jersey. Not far. Not yeah. far from me. He went to Rutgers. My dad went to Rutgers, and and uh, but I love the NBA, and I and so much so that I don't even follow college basketball. But I wanted to ask you, how long have you been doing the Nets? Oh, this is this is going to blow your mind. This is year twenty wow. zero. And you Jeez. look like a kid. You look like you have a baby face. You look like you're like you know thirty three or something. Right. That that's what I'm going for. Actually, <laughs> my first year with the team was nineteen ninety four ninety five. And if you remember that year, the the Sonics were actually playing in Tacoma. They weren't playing in Seattle. So for whatever reason, Butch Beard like knew people out there. We ended up going to Seattle or Tacoma two days early. We stayed like two days late. We were there five days basically in Tacoma. So the, the day we're supposed to leave to go to Phoenix on the next part of the road trip, they practice at a local high school. So everybody had to go. If you were with the traveling party, they were going to go right to the flight. So they, they file in. And it's the middle of the day. If kids are going to class, and the Nets with Benoit Benjamin and Rick Mahorn and Yinka Dare, Derek Coleman, Kenny Anderson, Jason Williams are walking down the hallway, and I'm on the back end of this train because <laughs> I've got to follow them in order to make sure I, I get on the flight after the practice. So everybody kind of walks in the gym. I'm last in line, and the guy that's guarding the gym area says to me, hey, 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 hey where are you going? I said, what's that? No, 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 I'm, I'm with the team. He goes, Get back to class. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> and, and we should point out that you're you're under six two. Yeah, just a just a shade. <laughs> yes, 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 you're 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 going to get into particular numbers. Uh, <laughs> I was reading something because I'm actually very excited uh, about the Brooklyn Nets this year. I'm sure a lot of people are, but I was reading that you, you, you know you were you were quoted in the article saying how. The fans were not there, and you were you, you would have conversations with some during your broadcasts. Literally, yeah. I mean, I would hear conversations absolutely loud and clear behind me. So then, just to I don't know, just to screw with people. But then the timeout would come, and I would turn around and I would follow up on whatever it is they were saying. I would just tag <laughs> their conversation. So there would be a, a couple behind me during game action. Uh, the Nets and, uh, you know, let's say it was the Nets and Warriors, and they'd be talking about vacation plans, maybe going to Hawaii, or Bahamas. <laughs> and then during the timeout, I'd turn around and, and I'd say, you know what, uh, Bahamas is actually a, a great spot for families. I, I think that, would, <laughs> that would be the way to go. And they'd be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you heard that? It's like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're basically the, the third man in the booth. <laughs> we hear everything. Um how is so what what is it like this year because i i think they're you know they lost at orlando i think they're struggling a little bit it's early but i i always look at it i thought i thought the spurs were better than the heat last year not by much but i i thought if i'm i'm glad they're not doing the uh the 232 two format anymore yeah. and i said i said if the if the uh if the if the spurs are going to win they're going to have to win game 6 they're not going to win game 7 and they of course they should have won game 6 and i'll mm -hmm. i'll do my popovich rant later even though i love him <laughs> Yeah. Just foul. Just foul the three pointer and put Duncan. Keep Duncan in to get the rebound. That's it. Bothers me. But back to the Nets. Do you think? Uh, I mean, how good do you think they can be this year? Well, you know, first and foremost, you you know KG. You, you know what he's all about. And I think when when he's on the other team, he really gets under your skin because he does things over the course of the game that can affect the outcome, and he does it in a way that. 
is cantankerous and is visceral. Oh, these are big words. That's I'm Syracuse. Sorry. You're showing off the Syracuse now. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Newhouse. I, I'm sorry. It wasn't just Syracuse. It was next level. <laughs> so when he's on your team, everything changes. Yeah. It's like it's completely different. You appreciate all of it. He's such a galvanizing force. He's it just just being uh, around the team in the early going, you can tell that the whole vibe is different. He's changed that. And, and yeah. I don't I don't know what kind of effect he's going to have on the court compared to what he used to. There, there's no way to expect it. And you know what? This weekend is is actually the first time they're going to face this back to back. And that was the huge yeah. preseason storyline with Jason Kidd be able to convince Garnett that he can't play in back-to-backs. either has to sit out the front end or the back end. So they play Washington on Friday night. They play uh, Indiana on Saturday night. So that, that'll be the first test. Yeah. It's, it's really a completely different feeling. There, there's a business-like approach. I think they all recognize that there's this small window of opportunity to go out there and, and be a factor and, and to actually be legitimate and credible and, rel- and, and relevant again. Yeah. And that... that that's a big step. It's a big step in this league when you go from a nice story, which they were last year, to, to maybe being a, an actual contender. Yeah, well, the talent level, to me, when I see – I watch the game when they beat the Heat and you swing it around. I'm a big Paul Pierce fan. I've always yep. loved his game. But when you swing it around and Joe Johnson was open for three-pointers because they got to contend with these other guys, I, I, I sometimes I, – I don't know how they can't, um, you know, get to the – Eastern Conference Finals with that much talent now, and I don't look at it as can they gel. These guys know how to play together. These yeah. aren't these aren't ball hogs. They swing the ball. Well, my my question because I don't watch him very often, you know, is Darren Williams going to stay healthy? But how is Brooke Lopez on defense? Is he is he just a little too methodical and slow or what? Yeah, he's gotten a little better. I think uh, there's that mechanical nature to his game, which kind of gives off the impression that he's a step behind. And, and that's that's not the case. He's actually gotten stronger, but it hasn't affected his agility. He's up to about 290 pounds. That's, that's about 20 pounds above where he was a year ago. And it, it's put in the right places right now. Mm. Uh, he's, he's better defensively than he's shown in my mind. And I think Garnett's influence is going to be big, not just when he's on the court, uh, but during practices, riding him a little bit, pushing him uh, to what he can be. And the other part of it, Craig, is is just their depth. Uh, There's no team that can match them right now, one through ten. Because you have the starting five, it's Williams, Johnson, Pierce, Garnett, and Lopez. You're going to see Garnett's minutes hover around that 23, 24-minute mark. Pierce is probably going to be more in the 27, 28-minute area. Then you can come off the bench with Kirilenko, with Terry, with Blatch, with Sean Livingston, with Alan Anderson, with Reggie Evans. Right. Now that's, that's considerable. That's 11 players, legitimate players that they feel they can rotate, mix and match. I think you'll see Terry with the starters quite a bit. If the matchup is right, you'll see Kirilenko, who you got to see a lot of last year, and he just does so many little things. So uh, there are a lot of different ways for Jason Kidd to go here, and that's the other part of the equation. Kidd in his new role, the respect level, the gravitas that he brings to it, just being a, a former player and a legendary player. And look, as you and I both know, anyone that follows the NBA, that takes you only so far. At some point, uh, you have to show the players that you have control of this, that uh, you have their best interest in mind, yeah. and that you're able to kind of see two steps ahead. And Lawrence Frank is the assistant, uh, the, the yeah. lead assistant. He's the highest paid assistant in the league. Is that what they say? Yeah, that's true. Is he, I, mean, I haven't seen his pay stuff, but I, I believe it to be true. Yeah. Well, you can check out the way he dresses. <laughs> yeah. He's, it's, and it's, that's, he's, he's wearing a 40 short, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I also think he went to Teaneck. I could be wrong. He um, are 100% correct, and David Stern. Yes, as well. yes. Um, uh, Prokhorov, is that how it's pronounced, the owner? It is. He's you, like a he's like a Bond villain. Yeah, I mean, do you, yeah he's do you, really. No, you know, I, I I I saw an article, and and he has these, he has this desk in the middle of this huge <laughs> office, and then there these blondes in heels. Is is that yeah. all true or what? Uh, everything that I could tell, uh, he is a really cool guy with a really good sense of humor, and I guess when you're a billionaire, eighteen times over, whatever it is now. Uh, you can laugh at, at what's happening around you. He has delivered on everything that he said he would, 
And as we know in this day and age, that doesn't always happen. Yeah. That's, that's not how it works. I know owners come in, they, they, they promise, they, they talk big when they buy the team, and then a couple of years go by and you go, well, what, what, what's happened here? Nothing. That This hasn't developed the way that they said it would. It has for him. Uh, everything he has said has actually come true and have, talked about winning a championship in a five-year period. So this is year three. Have you met him? Yes. Yes, I've met him three times. And what does he what does he say? He's very tall. Yeah. Uh, he is. He's a former uh, player. He's six seven yes. six eight or something yes, like that. Yes. Yes. He he enjoys like uh, high wire acts, like he heliports, and he jumps out of helicopters on skis. These are well. These we are call that yeah. That's called a thrill seeker. I'm yeah. not a I'm not a big fan of thrill seekers. No. Um, yeah, these are not mutual interests that we share. Yeah. I can tell and you that. Now, does he uh, has Mark Cuban criticized him because he uh, but Prokhorov pays a big luxury tax, correct? Yes. Yeah, he did. I, I believe he did criticize him in, early in the process. Yes. And is that? And I don't. I don't keep up with the billionaires. Is Prokhorov like uh, has considerable more money than Cuban? Is that? Is that why he uh, pays the big luxury tax? Or? I, I. I believe he does. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. that's kind of fun uh, feuding billionaires. Oh, that's that's tremendous. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a storyline I didn't anticipate. I could tell you that. What about you and Spurnock? You guys still get wasted when you guys lose on the road? Yeah. Do you get really bummed out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we just we drown our sorrows. And it's Spinarkel or Mike Fratello, and we got Donnie Marshall in, in the mix now from UConn. So it's it's a good good bunch of guys. Donnie uh, Donnie knows he's good looking. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. That was that was the the roughest part for me. Is just <laughs> uh, it, it now affects the way that I'm viewed in in a very negative fashion. Yes. Well, uh, where are you going? You you leaving tomorrow? You got to get to bed, right? Yeah. You know where I'm going. You're going to. to well, you're not going to Minnesota. Though. I am going to Minnesota. What, 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 I have I have Thursday night football tomorrow on the oh, radio the, oh. with another very attractive man, Trent Green. Oh yes, the, yeah. Uh, he, uh, he got stopped at an airport recently, and and they they were staring at him, and you know he just thought, oh okay, you you, you might know me from the NFL. Like ah, I think I, I know you, right? He's yeah. like, oh thanks so much. He's like, and the guy said, Jim Caviezel. Like, no. <laughs> right. No, but, yeah, all right, fine. That that works too. I'm going to give you my uh, 30 seconds on my Vikings because uh, they're not. I, they, when it comes to the Vikings, my dad you, always would tell me because we grew up it, a lot of town on that team. Four Super Bowls. Uh, everybody yep. from Chuck Foreman to Anthony Carter, who was one of my favorite. My sure. favorite Viking game because we're owned for in the Super Bowl is when we beat the the Niners in 1987. It was uh, the, the worst loss for Bill Walsh. He never forgot it. They were the best team in football. The Niners. We beat them in the playoffs. And they called Anthony Carter pound for pound the best player in the NFL. Mm. But but uh, I, I remind people that I was born in Kansas City, which is a true story. When it comes to the Vikings, I have to distance myself. They're arm's length. They they my dad says, don't let them sucker you in again. Mm. They're very talented. We want to get rid of Ponder. I think it's time for the get a new coach and draft a quarterback. Yeah. And uh, you know we're going to play outdoors for the next two years. For you know AP is going to have to run outdoors. Whew. Yeah, that that's. That's not an assignment I'm looking forward to. I, yeah. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> but tomorrow, uh, I'm looking forward to that. We got some Washington Redskins, some Minnesota Vikings. Then it's off to D.C. for Nets Wizards, and back to uh, Jersey for Giants Raiders. It's it's a fun filled weekend. What a life! Thank you for joining us, Ian. Craig, anytime. It's great to chat with you, and uh, I hope we can do it again. I hope to see you soon as well. Okay, buddy. Thank you. See you, bud. Ian Eagle, voice of the Brooklyn Nets. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.